In the last video on creating the Osmosis Solitaire game, we looked at the deck and card classes. So I'll just quick take a look at those again. Um, that's in a separate file. So we have a card class which um, implements a suit and a rank for each card. But the big thing is, and the reason why we created this, is to store image, um, an image for each card. And then we have the deck class which has a little bit of information about the, um, the size of the cards, maintains suits and ranks. Um, remember, it creates a product of those two to form a deck. And then for the deck, we store a card of each suit and rank, which also helps us store an image. That's the important part of that. And the deck also has the ability to shuffle the deck and change the color of the deck. Okay, so we reviewed that in the last video. I don't want to go into depth on that again. What I do want to go into is the creation of the table where we're going to actually play the game. So for this part, or for this video, we're going to create the rectangles. We're going to place messages on the screen. We're going to create a help menu. Um, we're going to create the new game button. Right now it doesn't do anything because we don't have any cards on the table. And we're going to create a little menu that um, will allow us to change the color of the deck in the future. All right, so the first thing to look at is when I create this class, this is the class for the Osmosis Solitaire game. Um, to create the table, I wasn't sure how much spacing uh, I wanted around like the edge of each one of these rectangles. I knew I wanted the rectangles, but how much spacing to put here. And then a card is gonna be placed inside of each one of these rectangles. I wasn't sure how much spacing I wanted there either. So I just created variables for those um, class variables. You can change these. Oops, probably don't want zero. Um, make something like 50 here and 150 there, 155, it's close enough. And run this and you can see what those do. So the horizontal tabbing gives you the space um, horizontally between the different rectangles. So that's this space is 50, 50, 50. And then the vertical tab gives you the space going horizontally between the different rectangles. That's the one I set to 155, which is perhaps a little bit much. So I found after I did all that, that I really just liked five. Um, and then the internal spacing again is when we place a card uh, inside one of these rectangles, it will have a little space around it. And that's the internal spacing. Okay, so to get this going, we are going to need a window. We're gonna call that root, it's tk.tk. I'm gonna title it solitaire. Uh, maybe we should have called it osmosis, but whatever. Okay, we need to create a menu. So this is how menus are created. Again, there's a video on creating menus, but I'm gonna review this. First, we create a menu, we call that menu bar, and that's attached to the root window. And then you can have multiple menus attached to menu bar. So I could have a help menu, uh, I could have a file menu, an about menu, a uh, configuration menu or something. I mean, you don't need all these things for a solitaire game, but those are all things you can do with menus. We are just creating one menu, which I'm calling help menu. And I'm attaching that to the menu bar, which I've already created, which is attached to the root. So it seems a little bit uh, kind of an obtuse way to do this if you are just um, creating one menu, but here's you know a way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a command, which I'm going to add to um, my help menu. And it's just going to have one command, which is how to play, which is going to bring up an about window. I just noticed there's a capital L there. After all the times I've done that. Okay. Um, so that command is just going to create a label, how to play. So when we drop this down, there's the how to play with the capital L still. And when we click on that, that's going to commit, call the command self.about. We're going to make this a cascade window. Um, so we're going to add this into the original menu bar as a cascade window, which means it drops down when you click on help. So we're labeling this cascade help. Um, and there's the help. So when you click on it, it cascades down. And then we're just configuring menu bar um, to go on to the root. Okay, so that creates that menu. We may as well go ahead and take a look at what happens when you click on this menu and how to play. It brings up a window that just has some rules in it and it also has this little eye icon. I wish I could 
could get rid of that. Probably is a way to do it, but this was a simple way to just create a, um, a little about window. So if we go down to this command self that about, which is called when you do how to play, uh, there's a real simple way to create a pop-up menu like that. We just use message box. So up above in my imports, I import it to Kinter, and then I imported from to Kinter message box, and then I also imported the cards. So if we go back down here to this message box, message box don't do a whole bunch, but again, it's a simple way to create a little window that comes up. Um, I titled it rules, and so there it says rules, and then it just prints off any string that you pass in. So I've just made this string up. It has all the different rules in, and it was that simple. So a real quick and easy way to add a little bit of information about the game. Okay, so for the next part, I knew I wanted to have an option for a new game. I knew I wanted to have an option to change the color of the deck, uh, mostly just to show how to create a little drop-down menu like this. Not because I really cared what the color of the deck was. Okay. Now, we have a little problem. This piece down here, this entire green piece, is one canvas for the table that the cards are played on. So that canvas is actually placed in column zero. This whole thing is column zero. So if I use the same grid up here to place this button, this label, and this cascade menu, then column one would be way over here, and this label would be way over here, and then this drop-down menu would be even further over. So it just look kind of ridiculous. The easiest way around that is just make a frame. That frame then goes in column zero of the root window, but then the frame has its own internal addressing scheme. So I've got a frame, which I'm going to call... Um, Oh, where'd you go? There we go. Menu frame. And menu frame, I'm giving a background of Saddle Brown. I've made it sticky east-west. Now, here's the reason why I did that. If I don't make this sticky east-west, then when it creates this frame, it's going to make the frame just large enough to hold those three objects, the button, the label, and the cascade menu. And then you have all this extra space around it. And it's automatically centered also inside of um, this space. So and it, that just doesn't look right. So if you make it sticky east-west, which means left to right, then it fills up um, that entire space, which is the way we want it. All right, so we don't get rid of that. These are weighted. The weighting helps with the spacing here. I, um, without... I wanted the deck color and the blue to be over here and a new game over there. So having the column for new game weighted heavier than uh, the column for the label and the cascade menu gives some spacing in there. There's a lot of there's a lot that goes on in placing um, these things in the window. Okay, so I create a button called new game. Give it a background color of tan and associate that with new game. So there's a method new game. It's not terribly surprising, I suppose. That goes in column zero of the frame that we created. And then I'm going to create a label, the deck color label. So that's that label right there. That's the label right there. Background is tan, same as the new game. That's going in that frame, menu frame. And that's going at column one. So this is column one for this frame. And I made this sticky east. So the reason why I did that, sticky east means it's it's going, normally by default everything is centered. But by making it sticky east, it, it places it to, in the right part of its column. And then I made the option menu sticky west, which puts it in the left side of the column, which puts these two together. If you get rid of this... Get rid of that sticky east, then it centers this label, and the label doesn't look like it's part of the cascade menu, and it doesn't quite look right. Um, now, for the cascade or for the option menu, sorry, for the option menu, that's going to go in the menu frame. Um, 
it's going to pass or have a variable self.pack color. So let's take a look at that. Pack color is going to be a tkinter string variable. So we've encountered those before. It's initialized to pack color, which is a parameter that's passed into the init. So down here, when I initialize this thing, um, I pass in the color blue. Now in this case, it doesn't matter because I'm not placing any cards, but um, that is something that gets initialized. Okay. Um, so we have this variable associated with it, and we have two options, red or blue, and then when a change is made, then that calls self.changeColor, which we don't have implemented yet, but it's in there. Okay, now we need to, I'm going to create the actual table that we played on, so the dark green table. That table, the dimensions of it are based on the size of the deck the deck height and deck width, but it's also based on the amount of tabs we have. There's actually six tabs going horizontal, or six, nah, six tabs vertically. So there's a space up here, one there, 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 and there. So there's six tabs, and then there's five rows total, four for playing and one for the deck. So five rows. Um, which have a height of deck plus the internal spacing and six vertical tabs. The width is similarly defined. Um, there are three horizontal tabs, one, two, and three. And then there are 14 cards to be played, one here and possibly three in the played, road, played row. And then two internal spacings, one for this rectangle and one for this one. So that gives you the, the dimensions of the table. And note how this is all built up off from variables, except for there are some numbers in here. So I hard-coded the six um, vertical tabs, the five um, playing rows. That's not something that programmers normally like to do. You don't like to see numbers written into your code like this. That's something that you would, up at the top, declare a variable to be like I did with a horizontal tab. Now, the reason why I did it this way is because I just didn't see the need to declare a variable here. Those things are hard-coded. They're not going to change. Unless you change this game of solitaire, those things are fixed. So I was fine with just hard-coding those numbers in for those. Um, others may disagree. Um, okay, so now, and this is all part of the knit again, we're going to make a pack. So we're going to make a deck calling deck with pack color. So we initialize the pack color in the deck. Now, we have a lot of information to take, keep track of. So here's where we start keeping track of all this information. Um, in the played rows, there's four of them. We didn't even know which cards are in those uh, played rows. So there's four rows here. So four lists inside of a list. And this is going to be a list of the cards in the played row. The kitty, again, has four rows. So here's a list of cards that are in the kitty in each one of those four rows. The stack, we're going to start playing cards onto the stack. That's going to be a list of cards. Um, card selected. When you click on the table, you may be selecting a card. If you click on the table and select a card, then this information will get filled in and it'll hold the rank, um, the suit for the card, and the position on the table where you clicked. So the position where the card is at. Position may be different from card selected. So you can select a card when you click on the deck, but then you can also select a place where to play the card. So position may give, uh, on a second click, may give some different information than card selected. Now we come to a monstrous dictionary. So I created a dictionary for each one of the positions on the board where you can click on and there could be cards. And that dictionary has a label. So this is labeled deck. This is labeled stack. This is labeled K, K row 1, K row 2, K row 3, K row 4. This is labeled the play rows. This is P row 1, P row 2, P row 3, P row 4. So you can see um, those labels here. Right? And for each one of those inside is a list so these are the keys these addresses are the keys for this dictionary and then the values is a list of four different positions and those positions are the corners for the these rectangles so the four corners are given by this dictionary um, and then there's also another dictionary for the cheats 
So there's four cheat cards that can be showed up here, up to four. Now for this part, I don't have rectangles up here. So I'm just placing cards up here. And to display an image, you only need the center. So this, for the cheats, there's only an X and a Y, just for the centers. And these are called cheat zero, cheat one, cheat two, cheat three. Okay, then inside the init, we call for a new game and the root.main loop forms the window. Whew, I might want to take a little breather. <laughs> and let's go down and see what new game does. So a new game inside of it has um, a procedure to print a message. So this X is used to print these messages. It takes the position, so the X and the Y. It takes the message as a string. Um, it takes the width, so these two messages are half the width of these two. And it takes a tag so that we can delete them later on if we want to. And then if the positions are given by um, the keys from that dictionary up above. So if it's in the cheat over here, then remember the cheat dictionary just gives the centers. So for if it is a cheat, that's this else, the X and Y is just that center and we're done. If it's in one of these rectangles then we want the center of that to put the string at so I average the X and the Y and I average or sorry I average the, the X's for the left and the right I average the Y's for the top and the bottom so you can see that here here I'm averaging the two X's and here I'm averaging the two Y's uh, from that dictionary now in the special case that we want to print this message right down here which is in the played row if you average the two X's, that puts the center of the message right there, which is not exactly what I wanted. So in that one special case where we're coming from the played row, then I took the left edge of that, um, added the internal spacing on, and the deck width. The reason why I added on the deck width is because this message is twice as wide as the deck. Okay, so we'll see that down below where we actually call and create those messages. So there's a method to print those messages to the screen that tidied things up a little bit. Um, we reinitialize, every time we call a new game, we reinitialize all those lists again. Card selected and position all get reinitialized. Everything that's on the table gets deleted. That includes all the rectangles and anything else that might be on there. So all, the, all that stuff needs to be recreated. Um, so that's the delete all. There is one binding at the moment, and that just goes to a click card. So anytime we left click on the table, it's going to call click card. And we'll see what that does in a second. Right now, it doesn't do much. Okay, so now we're actually going to place all this stuff on the screen. Here's the print help messages. Notice that I'm printing to the stack, the deck, P row 1, and cheat 0. And here is the text of those messages. Um, here's the width. So the first two are just the width of the deck. Um, the second two are twice the width of the deck, and then these are tags that allow those to be deleted later if we want to. So that creates the messages. What about the rectangles? Well, because I set this dictionary up the way I did, to create all those rectangles is actually a very simple loop. This code right here creates all of those rectangles. And so the way it does it is we do a for loop through self.deck corner. So remember that is a dictionary, right? So we're doing a for loop. We're going to get deck, stack, k row one, k row two, so on. And then we just do a create rectangle. We use the left corner um, for the upper left, the right corner for the lower right. So it's a dictionary. We just take corner and plug it in there. These are the coordinates. And the last thing is we want to tag it with um, the name of the rectangle. Well, the tags actually come from the keys for the dictionary. So corner again is going to first be deck, then it'll be stack, then it'll be k row one, k row two, k row three. So that's going to be the tag for that rectangle. So setting that up as a dictionary turned out to be very useful and it um, reduced a lot of my code. If you look at GitHub, you can actually see the original code I had where I didn't have that as a dictionary and the code was just a lot messier and a lot nastier. Setting that up as a dictionary cleaned things up a lot. Okay, one more quick breather, and then we're going to take a look at click card. So click card, oh, I need to do something down here. Come on. Stop. So click card is the thing that's bound to the canvas. So anytime I click on a canvas, 
click card is called. And what click card for right now, sooner or later click card is going to be used to actually play the game. For right now, it's just going to get a position, which I've called where clicked. So where clicked returns where you clicked on the table. And the addresses are um, deck, stack, K row 1 through K row 4, P row 1 through P row 4, and then none or nothing. If you click outside of those areas, you don't get an address back. You just get none. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, actually, it turns out to be pretty simple. Again, because those corners are in a dictionary, I'm going to do a for loop through um, deck corners. So position here is going to have a value initially. It'll be called deck, and then it'll be called stack. Again, it's these keys. Then K row 1 through K row 4, P row 1 through P row 4. And then for each one of those keys, I just check is X in between the left edge and right edge of the rectangle, is Y in between the top and bottom edge of the rectangle, and if it is, that's the rectangle I want, so I'm just going to return that position, which again is deck stack K row 1 through K row 4, um, P row 1 through P row 4. So setting that whole thing up as a dictionary really made this code pretty nice also, and notice what happens on the screen down here, I'm actually printing off position also before I return it, so um, this has been running the whole time. So when I click on here, we get nothing. So there's nothing happening. But if I click here, notice that stack comes up down here. If I click here, we get deck, K row 1, K row 2, K row 3, K row 4. Once again, those are the keys to that dictionary. Um, P row 1, P row 2, P row 3, P row 4. So just gives us a real simple way to get the position where we've clicked on the table. Um, that's everything we have for this video. Uh, this is So there's some standard things we had to do here. And one of them is when you're working with a canvas like this, you're going to have to, generally speaking, when you click, figure out where you've clicked at. So you're going to need a procedure to do that. In this case, it's called where click. Um, all right, I think that is is everything for this video. There's a lot in here. Um, this gets everything sort of set up. In the next video, we're going to see how to implement this and change the color of the deck and um, that kind of thing. We'll put some actual cards here on the table. We're not going to play any cards yet, but we'll play some cards on the table um, and that kind of stuff. All right, well, hopefully you're enjoying these and learning some things. Again, um, all the code for this is up on GitHub.